Hello, travelers. Welcome to the Cup of Fox Inn, where we discuss dungeons and dragons. <laughs> come, come, come on in, take a seat, and join us as we discuss homebrew for dungeons and dragons. Fifth edition. My name is Thomas the Human Bard. I am joined today by... Mercy the Tiefling Wizard. Or Tiefling Witch, perhaps. <laughs> nice. This place gets weirder every day. And Onag <laughs> the Half-Orc Barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> and... On this week's episode... Okay, I'm not... Okay. <laughs> I can't... I can't cannot keep, sus- <laughs> that is unsustainable. <laughs> can't keep that up. This episode, Mercy has brought us something that she found on uh, the World Wide Web here which I think Onog will have some interest in, as it is a sorcerer subclass. Yay! Ooh, the spooky, spooky one! Sp- a spooky class. The the spookerer. No. Nope. That's, that's never going to work. That's not... Scarer. The scarer. The scarcerer. Scarcerer. Well, that just sounds like there's not a lot of them. There's not enough. (laughs) But that's the the terrifying. Oh, no. So this is a sorcerer subclass um, based on being a vampire. This is from Reddit user Rain Junkie. This is from r slash unearthed arcana. So this is the sorcerer subclass vampiric bloodline. So immediately that piqued my interest Mm. because when I've experimented with or looked for vampire class options in the past, I've usually thought in terms of a warlock. Mm -hmm. Um, Thomas, you've made a vampire warlock patron that I have actually played. And that made sense to me of like, oh, there's like a higher vampire that you're getting some power from and becoming more like. But the idea of a sorcerer makes a ton of sense too. Because sorcerer's power inherently Mm -hmm. comes from their like ancestry or whatever. Exactly, yeah. Like you are genetically a vampire. Or if we look at the flavor text here, it kind of gives us a little intro. So the flavor text here says, your magic comes from a powerful vampire and you inherit a portion of their inherent magical abilities, which you supplement with martial prowess. A relative of yours was a vampire or you had a close encounter with a vampire spawn as a child and the wounds you suffered tainted your very blood with dark powers. Your dad was a ghost, then your mom was a werewolf, but your grandpa was a vampire. <laughs> yeah. So it's the idea you could be descended from a powerful vampire, or if you were attacked by a vampire thrall like or a, a vampire. Like something. you were you mm-hmm. were you weren't quite turned into a vampire, yeah. but you got a little something something for your trouble. Right. Which is which is like kind of the flavor of some of the other sorcerer subclasses, mm-hmm. where they're like either your grandpa was a dragon or like a dragon like like bestowed Sneezed magical power you. on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that makes sense. Sure. And it's like, yeah, I think a sorcerer is a pretty intuitive place to put vampires, if you want to put that as a class option. Fair enough. So the vampiric origin spells, uh, first level, you get Wrathful Smite. Origin spells. Ah, yeah, the variant. Right. I see. Yeah. You want to read that first real quick? So variant feature, origin spells. You gain spells at the sorcerer levels noted in the vampiric origin spells table. Once you gain an origin spell, you always know it, and it doesn't count against the number of spells you know. If you have an origin spell that doesn't appear on the sorcerer spell list, the spell is nonetheless a sorcerer spell for you. So it's a way of making it more flavorful. Broadening mm-hmm. the sorcerer spell well, list. Well, and that's that's interesting that they added the to this subclass as like a variant feature. Because that is something that every time Wizards of the Coast has tried to make a, like, Unearthed Arcana Sorcerer subclass, they always add, like, oh, and here are some free spells. And then every time they bring it into full production, they take all the free spells away, and I don't understand why. Right, which I I would assume that that's why they put this in here, is because Wizards typically does so. Was that in their class feature variant... That's what I was trying to remember. Is it a reference to that? I think there may have been a reference in there. I'm not sure. Yeah. But either way, giving a sorcerer more spells is never a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So. And I I feel like if you, if there are spells that are necessary to feel like you're really hitting the flavor of whatever you're trying to play, making it so Mm -hmm. that they don't count against what you can know and prepare, I think is really helpful. Yeah. 
I think never, it's just a good design. You're never worried about giving up on your whole, your character's whole purpose mm -hmm. just just for utility. It's like, well, if I give up all of my vampire spells just because they're not useful today, I'm, I'm not even a vampire anymore. So like having them always be prepared and mm -hmm. not count means you're free to do utility and always have with you your flavor to yeah. kick back into. Yeah. So the spells are Wrathful Smite, Misty Step, Gaseous Form, Charm Person, Enervation, and Harm. All, they all make sense to me. I've always liked the name, just harm. For harm. harm. <laughs> I would like to harm this man. <laughs> I like the idea that casting the spell harm is just you, like, hitting your fist with, or your open hand with, like, a baton. Just like, I'd like to cast harm. <laughs> and you're, like, rhythmically hitting a baseball bat into your hand. I feel like the word harm is so broad yet specific that it's, like, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Vampire's Birthright. Starting when you choose this origin at first level, you gain proficiency with simple and martial melee weapons. Additionally, your base AC is 16, your dexterity modifier doesn't affect this number, while you aren't wearing armor or wielding a shield. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the, uh, I believe the term is a gish. Yeah. As a spellcaster designed to be a melee Fighting. attacker as well. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense for a vampire, that they're a little more aggressive and, you know, up in your face. Yeah, they gain, they gain a lot of abilities. I don't know... Why they learn how to use martial weapons other than like for the functionality of everything but but mm -hmm. yeah like vampires like to to get in people's craw mm -hmm. especially in the way that the game works and this also explains wrathful smite as a first level spell yeah 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 because then you're gonna be you're gonna be getting because you can melee be hits. Smacking yeah people. yeah i mean it depends i guess on your on your resource for vampires because mm -hmm. certain yeah certain fantasy vampires are less like monstrous and feral and more just like super powered humans. So like mm -hmm. in uh you know, Castlevania, Alucard uses a sword like all the right, time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then in Skyrim, all you get are like illusion spells. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Dra right. Draining necromancy spells and that's it. Yeah, yeah, it definitely depends on where you're getting your mythology anyways, from. Continue. So Blood Rite, also at first level, you can sacrifice a potion a potion. One potion, please. Potions out. Crash. Also at first level, you can sacrifice a portion of your vitality to cheat death. As a bonus action, you can enter a blood rite, which lasts for one minute or until you're reduced to zero hit points, at which point it ends. You lose half your total hit points, and your hit point maximum is reduced by the same amount. You can't reduce yourself to zero hit points using this feature. When your blood rite ends, your hit point maximum is restored. You regain hit points equal to half your hit point maximum rounded up. You can use this feature twice, and you regain all expended uses of it when you finish a long rest. Wait, what, what, is, yeah. what does this do? What? <laughs> you so, can just cut your health in half? The other abilities sort of modify this. Sure, they but... kind of go with it. But at this point, what but, does it do? Like, what is the use at first level? Uh, what does it benefit <laughs> me to do this? Uh, oh, okay, hold on. I think I found it. So in the comments section, somebody brought up the very same thing of what does it do? I don't understand what the point of it is. The wording is a bit awkward because I wanted to keep this as brief as possible. This is from Rain Junkie, the poster. The too long did not read, is it supposed to function as a half orc's relentless endurance or a death ward spell? Oh, when instead you're reduced of... to zero hit points, except instead the HP cost, it, it instead costs HP to use, but refunds the cost once you're reduced to zero hit points. So basically, you can bank. Oh, you do oh, this okay. in anticipation okay, I see. of being reduced I see. to zero hit points. I see. So you do this in anticipation of being reduced to zero hit points, and then when you are reduced to zero hit points, the ability ends, and, and you then you gain half your hit points oh, back. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. So instead of it so, being a reaction to being reduced, you have to do it assuming that so you the, will be. So the whole point is to have the ability end, which yeah. I, which is interesting. Yeah, that that, is it's interesting. interesting wording on it. But yeah, so you can cut your health in half now, and then when your blood right ends, your hit point maximum is restored, and you regain hit points equal to half your hit point maximum rounded up. Mm -hmm. And the ability ends when you are reduced to zero hit points. So you just immediately pop back up to half health. Right. So you, you, you say you have some half, half of your health now, half of it later. I mean, and in a weird sort of a way, if you were below half health originally, it heals you up to half. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because if you only you. had 10 HP, you'd use this, they knock you for 10 points, and now you're back up to mm -hmm. half your max, which might be 30 or 40 HP or something. Yeah. 
Well, not and at first the, level, but you know. <laughs> the the real kicker, the real thing that actually puts this uh, over the edge is that you can use it twice, because if you could only use it once per long rest, um, then it's it sort of defeats it still sort of defeats itself as a mm-hmm. purpose. So it's like so I literally have half my health now and half of it later. And it doesn't really actually do anything unless you're receiving massive amounts of damage that would have instantly killed you, and instead it only took you down to half of your health. Yeah. Uh, but the ability to use it twice is what makes it um, potent. Because once you've used it that first time, now you're at half of your health, and you use it again, you're, you don't lose any health because you were already at half health. And now when somebody tries to hit you again, um, you go back up to half health again. Yeah. Kind of a thing. So it's it's I mean, like it's like you can use it once, but using it twice actually makes it so that it's like using it once, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I, and then the thing I think to realize is that first level, which when that's when this is happening, mm-hmm. right? First level. This is a I matter mean, of like six HP. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. so, so it's like honestly one hit is enough to kill you sometimes at that early, those early levels mm-hmm. where it's like mm-hmm. the goblin hit you for, I guess, 10 hit points. You're like, oh, that that sh- r- straight out kills me. <laughs> Flat out dead. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, at those early levels, even being saved from just the random critical hit from a goblin is very useful. I yeah. feel like the idea of it reducing your hit points in the first place, though, makes me think of it as like a half-life because okay. you're not even mm-hmm. like a fully alive person. You're kind of undead. That's why you're losing your health because you're like drawing your own blood. Bloodletting, classic. Yeah, but then it rejuvenates mm-hmm. you because you drank blood. Bloodletting works is what we're trying to say. Let's get some leeches. It doesn't. Don't listen to the Victorians about literally anything. Yeah, that's true. Also, on a on a only mildly related note to that anecdote about bloodletting, uh, I've been reading King uh, King Arthur and his knights, and one of the things that happens is King Arthur gets badly beaten in a duel, and this monk starts like leeching him, and I'm like, so the man is suffering from severe blood loss. Because he received a, he was res- like he it, it like the, the, the book the book details how he gets wounded and it's like he he receives a head wound like he is bleeding out that's what's hap- that's what happens with head wounds is because that's where all the blood yeah. goes yeah I, I have a much Anyways. more uh, related um, tangent to go on people if we can keep it together yeah. here all right mm-hmm. continue I believe that drinking kool-aid would be sufficient for a vampire's blood needs because kool-aid is the blood of the pitcher folk one of the most famous oh. of whom is of course the kool-aid man himself mm. it is his who, blood it is his who blood. sells his own blood to children yes we drink of his blood and eat of his you know, kool-aid box. <laughs> eat of his glass <laughs> a glass of kool-aid no. and, a, and a plate of kool-aid flavored jello is the dark You're sacrament to say glass shards because that's his body <laughs> no 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 i'm just saying that's the dark sacrament that, that the vampires must partake vampire, yeah, yeah. But that's if it's if it could be the blood of a creature, mm. then I think it counts as blood. And Kool Aid is obviously the blood of the Kool Aid Man. Okay. I guess it's like you All know, right. humans we can eat the flesh of most creatures, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, so like, mm-hmm. why do they need only human blood? Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Dang, these are the real questions. All right, let's, let's go. Continue. <laughs> okay, advanced rights. At 6th level, your vampiric nature empowers you, granting you fortitude and agility. Your walking speed increases by 5 feet, and you gain the following benefits while you are in a blood rite. So, building on that, your walking Mm -hmm. speed increases by an additional 5 feet, and opportunity attacks made against you have disadvantage. Whenever you take non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, you can reduce that damage by 2. Oh, I intoned that wrong, that was it. You can reduce (laughs) that damage by (laughs) 2. Nice. Okay, so I, okay, hmm, here's the question, and I think uh, Onag's going to notice this as well. Mm-hmm. Is the goal of your blood right not to to get hit to all end. the way, to, to end it? Yeah. Because this makes it harder to end it. Well, no, you don't well, necessarily it, want to end it. It's more that if it ends, you're protected, right? Cause, and cause, when it ends in one minute anyways, you get your health back. Yeah, so, so there really isn't a cost. I don't think you're trying to die, because then why not have just kept Cuz this actually in the first counteracts. Place? Yeah, this actually counteracts the, one of the main issues with the original blood li- blood light is if you are being attacked Bud light? by the original blood light. <laughs> the blood, blood light. right. The blood <laughs> right. 
Because if you are being attacked by degrees with a bunch of tiny attacks, it really doesn't make a difference. But mm -hmm. with this, it actually negates that downside because if you're being attacked by a bunch of goblins using bows and arrows, two of their damage is being reduced every time, which a lot of in a lot of cases is like all the damage they did. Yeah, <laughs> it is interesting say. to me that it's reduce it by two yeah, a because flat reduction because that is going to be drastically less useful later on. Well, yeah, as you as you level up, that's not as useful as just straight resistance. It's true. It is inter It's also just like not really a fifth edition style. They'll yeah. they'll just say resistance. It's probably a like, carryover take, from take older styles. Um, heavy armor master is one of the only instances where there is a flat damage reduction, Interesting. and it is very it is three damage reduction. Uh, from no and once again, it's weird that it's non-magical, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing mm -hmm. damage. Because once again, that also that negates the usefulness yeah. as Later this level. as you yeah. level up. Yeah, because at again, a certain it's point, everything's flavorful. just magic. Yeah, if you're yeah. taking forty-five damage, reducing it by two doesn't matter. Doesn't I mean, mean anything. Yeah. yeah, every damage matters, but also, I think that the uh, the flavor is more for like. As a vampire, vampires need to be hit with magic weapons or like silvered That's weapons. That's true, yeah. So it's like you, non magic weapons you're stronger against, but they can get around it. But I, you're right, yeah. it does become less and less useful as not only do you all get magic weapons, but the world becomes more and more magical the higher level you are. I feel like are. because it's specifically mm -hmm. when you're in the blood right and not all the time, you could buff that ability and make it well, a little stronger. Like, I, I think maybe, have maybe have balanced. something have something in it that like and then at 10th level this increases by mm -hmm. one or something you know yeah yeah and i will say that's that not bad so far and this is nothing because we you know we haven't finished off yet so i'm not sure yeah. that this might be not be the case but so far there's not a lot tying this inherently to being a sorcerer yet sure yeah um, there's nothing Almost about like, everything's about entering melee combat with like the mobility yeah. There's nothing, nothing in really here that's modifies. like while in your blood right, you your spells are that's better true, somehow. Yeah, which is generally as a sorcerer, you're looking for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I know, but then again, the new spells you get all are about helping you in melee combat. So maybe yeah. maybe that's fine. Maybe not all sorcerers know. are spell nerds. You know. Yeah, it's interesting well, to see how it, like, no, none, it deals no with sorcerers that. are nerds. Uh, Only wizards for, are nerds. I would. I'm interested Mercy. in why, and this is like I totally understand that they chose for this alternate cost to be half mm -hmm. your HP, but why it mm -hmm. doesn't cost like a sorcery point to do the blood because sure. that would tie it immediately to sorcerers. Mm -hmm. But then it would draw on like, well, you want your sorcery points for other things, but right. it just it would make sense to be like a new use mm -hmm. for sorcery points. But it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be really here. interested in sorcery. And that's the thing, yeah, is it, it, it is interesting. I didn't mean to cut you off, sorry. But no, um, sorcery points are kind of in this weird limbo as far as alternative, like, resources work in uh, D&D. Mm -hmm. Because you're always looking for more things to do with your sorcery points, but you're always running out of those darn things. Yeah. Because you need them for so many... There's so many things you need them for as opposed to, like, want to use them for. Because it's, it's not the same, because like with key points, it's like, ooh, and then I can use one of my vast number of key points that I get back on a short rest to do these cool things. And sorcerers with their sorcery points are like, but if I do this now, I won't be able to do this later on this evening. And what's, oh, you know, is that going to matter? I don't know if this is part of this because we haven't finished mm -hmm. yet. So I will mm -hmm. retain my like larger version of this for maybe after when we can talk about how we might change the subclass but some version where you gain some sorcery points on like, you know, drinking blood or whatever, like that, mm -hmm. that would be pretty wild. And I'm interested to see if there's anything like that in here. But yeah, and either way, and I, I wanted to, 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 to comment too, like I love the, the, the flavor of this and just the, sh the raw utility of that. That's like the blood right ability is kind of like a genius idea in and of itself. And when you start adding things on top of it, it becomes a cool new design place, mm -hmm. design space to be working in. So yeah, feel, let's keep going. I feel like it's one of those things where it doesn't make any sense until you kind of squint in your eyes and tilt your head, and then you're like, oh. Well, and I think that's just because it is unique to D&D. Yeah. &D. They didn't just grab a mechanic and from, from something else and, and, yeah, color over yeah. it, yeah. which is cool. Like, yeah, it makes good. it feel like a really unique subclass. Yeah. So Feasting Strike, also at 6th level, your hunger drives you. Nice. Now we're getting vampire-y. Well, when, you're nice. just hungry. This is not vampiric <laughs> hunger. This is regular. Regular hunger. Whenever you're just a, creature, a growing boy. Yeah. 
Whenever a creature attacks you or forces you to make a saving throw, you can use your reaction to move up to half your speed directly towards it and make a single melee weapon attack against it. If the attack hits, you can spend one sorcery point to spend a hit right. die, rolling it and adding your constitution modifier. You regain a number of hit points equal to the total, minimum of one, and the target of your attack takes the same amount of necrotic damage. So that Ooh. feels very vampire-y, and we're using our sorcery points. So now I feel like it's getting now tied tied in a little now, bit more. Mm -hmm. Now we're kicking off. And since you're, you know, rushing them, straight line rushing mm -hmm. them, you're going to need maybe some backup plan with your blood right of like, mm -hmm. okay, I just sprinted directly at the... the uh, Death Knight, and he's going to be attacking me again. I think something, he's got multi attack. <laughs> something I really like about the Blood Right is that it feels very much like a vampire to kill them and they stand up stronger than even before. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, oh, I thought I had killed them, but I guess I didn't. Yeah, it's sort of this like, isn't even thought. my final form. Yeah. Yeah. So at 14th level, Defy Death. You don't need to eat, drink, or breathe, and you gain resistance to necrotic damage. If you're in a blood rite, you instead gain immunity to necrotic damage. Additionally, nice. when you finish a short rest, you regain an expended use of your blood rite feature. So now you can basically use okay. it three times a day instead of two. You, if you kind of wasted a charge earlier, maybe, mm -hmm. you could be like, okay, well, yeah. I'll give that back. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's a little more of a, a something that you can experiment with and expend. Yeah. Okay. yeah. More forgiving. Which is nice that you can use it pretty pretty frequently. I mean, it depends on your play style, but I feel like it, at least, you know, in our games, usually, like, you're not having more than three combat encounters in a day most of the time. So it feels like you get to use your blood right pretty much all the time, mm -hmm. which is I cool. Do, I do like the, you know, you don't need to eat, drink, or breathe, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel like often that that's part of, um, so, I mean, there's the version of it for, like, monks or whatnot, where it's about becoming yeah. right. ascendant. But generally speaking, otherwise, it's about your undead nature. It's something like that. It's like as a skeleton or a zombie or whatever. You don't have to right. eat, drink, breathe, mm -hmm. uh, sleep often. And I feel like something something is lost when there's, like, that part of the flavor isn't inherent to like the ability just being able to not eat or drink or breathe it, it's weirdly kind of like a buff in general right because it's the it's you, much more of a ribbon ability yeah Yeah. oh no for sure it's a ribbon ability. i'm saying like in it's a it's a buff in general because now you just don't have to worry about those things like the rest right. of us when i think that generally it's supposed to imply a vague horror element where it's like, you're maybe not even human anymore, and that should be kind of worrying to you. Everyone else is like, oh, yummy, delicious food. And you're like, I no longer can taste food. I, I, I no longer get joy. It's very, of, very Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, and I wish there was a bit more of that baked in when we give that to players, when mm. we say, hey, you don't have to eat, drink, or uh, breathe anymore, but also... And you, you should well, be concerned I, about it. I think it. something that, that, could, that can um, add more of that sort of, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean element is, it, is saying not you don't have to, but you can't. Yeah, Because yeah. if it's that you can't well, eat... <laughs> but, but also then you have say to... you don't have to. Like, you have to say... Right, you know, no, yeah, yeah, you have to say you don't have to, but also you cannot. Because typically when it just says you don't need to eat or drink, you still can. Yeah. But if it's Whenever like... you eat, it turns to ash in your mouth. Yeah, yeah but if it's yeah, like yeah. you can't, I think that makes it feel more monstrous. I also do want to note that specifically it doesn't say you don't sleep anymore, which I like because oh, you can sleep in a coffin. Oh, very good. Very, <laughs> very important. Very, yeah. very important. Uh, the the other thing I was going to say is that maybe it could include some sort of nod to this in like you now show up on detect undead spells or something. Like yeah, that. it's like you're yeah. not necessarily treated as an undead except for you are. But now you now you start one. giving false positives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like people start treating you differently. Like people who know better, like uh, high level clerics and paladins and things, will be like, hey. Why are you undead, man? It's like I'm not undead. Don't worry about yeah. it. I just don't even need to eat or drink anymore. Or Which, as like a, a note to creators, you would have to be really specific in your wording with that, yeah, because sure. you would have to clarify like you are still humanoid, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but mm -hmm. you give off a faint aura of, of, of yeah, uh, when detect is. undead is yeah. is cast. Could, because um, otherwise, your DM is going to be like, well, do you are you undead yeah. for the purposes of like turn undead and things? Yeah. And so, if right. you don't want that, you have to clarify that. Definitely, but I just think for the to imply the flavor of like you are gaining this great ability of you don't have to worry about breathing or eating anymore. Like mm -hmm. you can totally 
sacrifice your kind of like uh, your own comfort to do important stuff for the group. They're like, the only way to get through there would be to swim through water, but no one can like hold their breath that long. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I don't even need to breathe sick. I can do it. Mm-hmm. But it's like there should be some sort of a maybe like a role playing cost to being like, but now you're less human than you used to be. I feel like, if or I you guess were, less of a well, humanoid, whatever. I feel like if I were DMing something where a character that is not like a, a you know, Triton or something that like isn't an aquatic mm-hmm. race had to be underwater for a really long time, but it was fine because they couldn't breathe, I feel like you'd have to make wisdom saving throws to not like go. Have a panic go mad attack. a bit like yeah have like a panic yeah. attack from it well, just because that would be kind of overwhelming yeah not not and not to bring uh up twilight when i didn't have to but i'm gonna do that <laughs> okay um because probably one of my favorite parts of the all those books is in the the last one when spoiler alert for like a 10 year old book right uh bella gets turned into a vampire and then what? Her dad's her dad's coming over, and so they all have to like teach her how to be human again. Because yeah. it's not that she doesn't know how to be human, but it's like you, she, you don't need to breathe, Remember you don't to need blink. to blink, <laughs> you don't you don't feel warm, so you have to do all these things t- on purpose now, as opposed to um, you know your brain doing them yeah. inherently, like yeah. shifting you know. around so you don't hold too still because you don't get uncomfortable. Because if you hold too still, still yeah. that sets people off because exactly. they're like, "Why are what you haven't moved in twenty minutes? Yeah. What's going on?" I would love. I mean, you can always choose to role play that if you took this up class, mm-hmm. but I'd like if something of that was baked into it. Definitely. But let's 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 move on here. So just right. our final ability left here, blood pact. At eighteenth level, you can bind your blood to the blood of another, shackling the two of you together. When you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack while your blood right is active, you can spend five sorcery points to shackle them. A 20-foot radius sphere appears centered on that creature, but doesn't move with it and lasts for one minute until you leave the sphere or when your blood right ends. The creature you shackled can't leave the sphere by any means. All teleportation attempts fail, and spells and abilities can't move the creature outside the sphere unless you cast them. If you use this feature on a different creature while you have a sphere created, the first one vanishes and the creature you initially shackled is released. So Why? it's sort of the you're trapped in here with me. <laughs> Interesting. So it's so it's a five sorcery point cost compelled duel that doesn't have saves. Yeah, no. it kind of just forces. But it can also be used as like a force cage. Yeah, it, it, it can, can also, also just be used, used as a trap. force cage. Yeah. And your friends can go into it and mm-hmm. leave, but you can't leave unless you want right. to stick around. You're stuck in there with so, it. So, real quick. Okay. I'm by no means against this ability. This is pretty cool. I like the idea for this. I, I didn't see it coming. I yeah. Feel like that's a yeah, little that weird. Is... <laughs> that's kind well, of like, I... I was looking for the, you know, the ultimate version of all these abilities coming together. I did not predict it would be you build a cage around mm-hmm. them. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I think I think it's part of what the creator has been clearly trying to do in making this Gish melee sorcerer, and that's that's kind of what we talked about earlier. Is like, well, none of these really have to do with any of the spells a sorcerer can cast, and because they wanted to make a more melee focused thing, because they had to counteract so many things about the sorcerer class inherently to make it. I feel like they felt they needed to do. Every single ability has to deal with me being a melee fighter so that mm-hmm. to make that path more viable. Sure, sure, sure. That makes sense. Um, so, so for all of the pieces together, looking at it as a whole, especially as like the clear intent of it becoming a, a Gish sorcerer, like a lot of the downsides of a Gish sorcerer is they have weak armor class, they have the smallest health pool of any you know class and this creator has gone with this vampiric flavor to make all of those things so like the vampire's birthright that's a that's a thing that's not unprecedented in the monster manual when you become a vampire your armor class like boosts up uh-huh. yeah. Randomly, yeah, definitely. you know yeah. and so this is this is very cool the blood right of like use it not not just straight up just giving you resistances to stuff and hoping that's good enough but of utilizing your limited health pool and kind of stretching it out as far as you can like i actually really really like the blood right ability now that i know what it does yeah um (laughs) um, especially for a gish where it's like um you know the uh the blade song the wizard 
made their gish with the Bladesong Sorcerer, and their answer was, just keep giving them armor class. Give them all the armor class in the world, and that will make a gish. And this one kind of went the other way. It's like, you have a set armor class, but now let's kind of drag out as much health as we can out of this guy. Yeah. Make it so you just can't die, which feels much more yeah. vampire My, Very yeah, much definitely. more vampire Which is really yeah. cool. I think what would be what would be really cool is because this has its own unique sort of vampiric feeling would be pairing this in a party with a couple of other vampires. Like <laughs> yeah. but like but like everyone's it's sort of like the um uh, what we do in the shadows, we're like they're all a different vampire. You know what I mean? Like mm, one yeah, of you yeah, is the yeah. Nosferatu, and like... one of you is the Dracula. <laughs> and but it's like who is who? Where like you get a warlock who their whole thing is like being an edgy like goth they wear a cape. Uh, Dracula. But then you get this uh, sorcerer who they're more about being like an Alucard, yeah. like like a sexy fighter vampire. You're also a beautiful mm. anime boy uh-huh. if you take this. But then at least one of your so why other... Why are you shirtless? Why are you always shirtless? <laughs> There's like a vamp, like a necromancer vampire wizard who's just like the Nosferatu, like just ancient looking and like um, very monstrous <laughs> in nature. But you're all vampire party That's on, really on a vampire fun, road trip. Back yeah. in my day, we wore our frilly blouses. We didn't go around shirtless. <laughs> you have to commit yeah. to being a vampire. Yeah, you can uh, You can use that idea for your Halloween game this year. <laughs> ranger, Beastmaster, Ranger, your, but it's a bat. For your socially distanced <laughs> oh, no. online oh. Halloween D&D game. Swarm Keeper Ranger, Swarm of Bats. <gasps> yeah! And then you're a vampire. That's actually very nice. good. I like that a lot. That's a very That's good very flavor nice. for that. Well, one reason why I... Well, the reason really why I wanted to bring this to the show as soon as mm-hmm. I saw it is because it is so unexpected and it surprises mm-hmm. me because, you know, as someone who I like to, you know, play around making homebrew stuff myself too, sometimes you're like, ooh, I just want to reflavor this a little bit out of existing pieces and mechanics that already exist and just sort of like mix and match it into a subclass that I want to have. Uh-huh. And sometimes you put a lot more <laughs> effort and thought and you know nitpicking and working on rebalancing things to make a whole new mechanic or a whole new system and i feel like that's what this one did for sure and i am impressed with its originality like i, I just thought it was really interesting i was like not what i would have thought yeah. but it works and to just think of i really enjoy folklore and i listen to several podcasts about it on a daily basis uh-huh. and so i think it's really cool to see like different versions of classic folklore monsters and it's like when what things different cultures or times or medium have or medias like have it expressed different monsters as being so i thought this was really interesting because it isn't the sort of dracula halloween vampire that we're used to and it's not like the twilight vampires that we're used to either and it was kind of its own idea and specifically because you aren't really a vampire you're just touched by one touched by one so you are kind of a different creature it's sort of the idea of a vampire's Mm -hmm. thrall being different than a vampire being different than a vampire lord and so i thought that was cool to have another type of being sort of connected to the vampire mythos yeah I think that's really cool. I agree. Each time that I like read one of the abilities, I was surprised by it. But it, by the end, it all makes sense. Yeah. It all tracks to like understanding what they're going for. I feel like halfway through, we were we were sort of lost, but then it it's all kind comes of, together. I <laughs> equate like, it to I'm trusting you. Where are you taking me? Yeah. I I equate it to uh, finding out Henry Cavill was cast as the Witcher, <laughs> and being like, wait, really? really? And then watching, and then as we watched more and more of the Witcher, I was like, oh no, this was the correct choice. Did like that's quote? that's how this subclass feels. What was that one tweet about it? Like, oh yeah, he grimes up good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like And so yeah. That's very fair. Very it, it kinda grows on you mm-hmm. over time. I, I like You're it. like, oh I see how it all works together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting, really creative. Also love the Hades art, man. All the art in Hades is so good. It is very Everyone good. is just so hot. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone. Except for Dusa. <laughs> well, uh travelers. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, thank you again to uh, user Rain Junkie on Reddit. We'll make sure to link to the original post in the description below. Uh, go check that post out. Give it an upvote or a comment um, if you can. Support that creator and the good work that they're doing. If you enjoyed our uh, discussion here, remember to like the video and subscribe for future Dungeons and Dragons homebrew discussion content. And if you have a homebrew you'd like us to talk about on the show, which we're getting a lot sent in these days, yeah. which is really great, um, please send it to us at the Copper Fox Inn at gmail.com or on social media at the Copper Fox Inn or by commenting it below the video. And uh, 
thanks for bringing this mercy. Uh, I'll be watching your um, actions in the upcoming days mm -hmm. with great interest as I hold cloves of garlic behind me, yeah. um, surreptitiously waiting for any sign. I'll be holding a lot of mirrors up to you. Just to just keep an eye. I on mean, you. it wouldn't be the first time, but I don't blame you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like you're one weekend off at any moment from yeah. deciding, you know what, I think it's worth it, vampire time. I think it's Here we just go. time to be a vampire. Yeah. Becoming like a, a goth evil wizard queen, yeah, witch I, queen. Yeah. yeah, we're all really... I'm, I'm always a few days away. Yeah. The purpose of this podcast is actually for the three of us to just make sure that you don't go over that edge. I am one day away from becoming an, <laughs> an evil witch queen. One bad day away at any given time. Well... Uh, we'll be keeping that eye on you. <laughs> and until next time, travelers, keep on adventuring. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.